Hello, my name's Ben, this is Rebecca, and we are Outliers Overland. Welcome to our Rate Your Rig video. This is where we find out if you and your rig are tough enough to handle bugging out in a pandemic or other apocalyptic situation that we've seen portrayed in cinema, or even recently in real life. So why are we creating this video? Well, when the virus hit the fan, we were in Baja, California, Mexico. As things started locking down, we decided it was time to make the 4,300 mile, 16 day journey back home to Alaska that also included picking up my mom who full times in a motorhome. And it's also when we realized it's not always a bugging out situation because in our case, we were bugging in. What kind of vehicles are we talking about? Well, anything that can be used to bug out and get you to safety. That includes a motorhome, a pickup truck towing a trailer, an expedition vehicle like ours, or even a Toyota Tacoma with a rooftop tent. You could also use a car, a van, a motorcycle, or even a boat. To make this test fun and easy, we've broken it down into 10 categories. Chassis, living quarters, food, water, electricity, as well as plumbing, medical, occupant skills, geographic location, and defense. As we work our way through the test, we're gonna share where we feel that our expedition vehicle ranks. And I'll let you know right now, we scored 74 out of 100. Well, obviously it's on the honor system. And as previously mentioned, each category is scored on a scale of zero to 10. You're also gonna have to be objective. There are always two sides to a coin. Everything has pros and cons. So take a step back when looking at your rig and be objective. For example, one of the military LMTB truck chassis. These things are beasts. They can go anywhere, but they're not very maneuverable and they're also slow as heck. So those are cons and things to look for. As we work our way through the video, feel free to pause and write down your answers for your rig. For a little added fun, when we're all finished, in the comments below, post your score and tell us a little bit about your rig. One final thought before jumping into the test, visit our website, outliersoverland.com. Traveler resources, newsletters, increased engagement with us, merchandise, all kinds of good stuff, outliersoverland.com. We're also producing a docu-series on our travels in North America called Over the Land, North America. So be sure to check out the trailer at overthelandproductions.com. First up has to be the chassis. Everything is built from the chassis up. Is this vehicle going to start when you need it? Is it reliable? And is it ready to go in the event of a bug out situation? Another question to ask, how maneuverable is your rig? Big RVs are not going to score so well here. Travel trailers and trucks also a little harder with a wide turning radius, something that is really important if you need to make a U-turn quick. Internal combustion engines are rendered useless without fuel. So is your vehicle fueled up and ready to go? How much fuel can you hold? Do you think you'll be able to find it in the event of an apocalypse? And what kind of range do you have with full tanks? In addition to that, does your vehicle have any special qualities? Is it an off-road machine, 4x4 capable? Is it a high-performance road machine that can outrun things and maneuver quickly and drive fast? So where do we rank our 4x4 Expedition vehicle Denny, built on a Mitsubishi Fuso chassis? Well, I think he deserves a solid 8. I would agree. He may not be a sports car, but the Fuso can handle any kind of road conditions. Yes, it was designed for doing deliveries in cities and our 4x4 version was designed to work on construction sites and industrial applications. So it is a beast off-road. And it has top speeds of 70 miles per hour, which is pretty respectable, especially in comparison to other chassis. And then with the additional fuel tank, we have over 800 miles of fuel range we don't need def fluid or ultra low sulfur diesel. I don't know if biodiesel would be a problem, but we would explore it <laughs> <We> if <tried. laughs> uh, necessary. But I feel within 800 miles, we could find safety. Next category up, the ever important living quarters or camper unit provides protection from the elements, security, and creates sustainability. Yes, does your vehicle have a camper unit? Because that is a positive. 
or do you have to pitch a tent? Can this vehicle and camper unit sleep your whole family? Or do you need to pick a favorite? Other important factors to consider for your camping unit. First of all, are you able to heat and cool it? You definitely do not want to have to run from the elements. Yeah, you can never really schedule a pandemic or apocalypse unless it happened in 2012. Ah, but does your vehicle have a pass through? Do you need to get out from a trailer or a camper to get to the driver's seat? That can compromise your security. And finally, how fast can you pack up your rig? If you've got a big travel trailer and you've got to lift the jacks and you've got to connect the hitch and all of those things, those definitely can compromise your safety. So where does Denny rate? I say an eight. One downside we do have is no pass through. So we have to get out of the camper to get to the driver's seat. It's definitely very well insulated for winter conditions. This past winter, we camped in minus 20 Fahrenheit conditions while driving down the Alcan. Now that same insulation does help with the heat when combined with the white exterior color a ceiling fan, and those awesome awning style windows. Uh, but still, it is no substitute for an air conditioner. We are also able to pack up in about five minutes. Things might be a little bit messy, but we could be wheels up really quick. Moving on to the ever important life-sustaining substance called water. Can your bug out vehicle carry it? How much of it can you carry? And this is where big RVs and travel trailers will excel. Next question to ask yourself, are you able to capture water? Either catch it as it's falling from the sky or pump it from a natural source into your rig. Once you have it in your rig, are you able to make it potable with filters? And where does Denny the Expedition Vehicle rate? Well, we're putting him at a six. We can hold a respectable amount of water, 40 gallons, but we do need to get it from somewhere. Features like a pump, a water purification system, and larger tanks would take it up to a nine. Well, it's only fitting to follow up water with the substance called food. Finding it, cooking it, preserving it, storing it, and yes, larger rigs are going to excel here. This includes thinking about your refrigeration and freezer system for storage, but also are you able to create shelf stable foods and store them? So it includes having pressure cookers and smokers and dehydrators and also space to store those things as well as the foods you create. Whether you are still on the run or have found a safe place to post up during the apocalypse, you're going to have to cook that food. Now, is your food being cooked outside or inside? because being outside is mighty vulnerable in the apocalypse. Fuel sources also have to be a factor. Do you have a stove that runs off of diesel or propane and you have to find those fuel sources? Or do you have an electric stovetop that can be ran off of the renewable energy from your solar panels? Secondly, ask yourself if you have backups, maybe a diesel stove and an electric stovetop, maybe a barbecue, lots of options, but you've gotta have backup choices. We're going to rate Denny the Expedition Vehicle at a 7. We do have a refrigerator and freezer. They are small, but on the positive side, they are 12 volt and run off our batteries, which are charged off of solar. We do also have a sufficient amount of dry storage where we could keep a pressure cooker and dehydrator in scenarios like this, as well as the food that we preserved. When it comes to cooking, our main stove is fueled by diesel, which is awesome. It's efficient, but it is a consumable product. So in an event like this, we would probably lean more towards using the little electric skillet or the instant pot. A barbecue that we carry with us is also an extra backup, although it requires propane as well. So eventually it probably give out. Well, as long as an EMP didn't wipe out everything electrical, it's time to talk about electricity. First of all, are you able to create it? And if so, is it with a renewable resource like solar or do you have to have fuel to run your generator? And once you've created it, where are you gonna store it? And how big is your battery bank? We feel Denny, the Expedition Vehicle, rates really well in terms of electricity at an eight. 520 watts of solar on the roof, 300 amp hours of Battleborn lithium batteries, a 2000 watt inverter for AC power and 12 volt and USB ports throughout the camper, it's looking pretty good. 
the things that would take it up to a 10 would be a backup generator, a couple of extra batteries, and a bigger inverter. Next up, the ever important thing called plumbing, which is valuable for health reasons, sanitation, and even security. Because if you have to go outside to do your business, you're mighty vulnerable with your pants down. <laughs> In addition to that, you also have to think about dumping techniques and methods. Are you able to use an outhouse or do you have to go find a dump station? And when it is time to dump, do you have to move or can you stay in place? We feel Denny the Expedition Vehicle ranks really well here at A9 because we have plumbing and it is complete with a shower and sink so we can keep clean. In addition to that, we have a toilet inside the rig. It is a cassette toilet. We don't have to leave to do our business. We can dig a hole or use an outhouse to dump our tank, and we don't have to go anywhere. We can pull it out of the vehicle, carry it to an appropriate location, dump it, and return it. Next up, security and defense. I know a lot of your minds are gonna go instantly to guns and firearms, but this is so much more. First thing you want to think about is your camper and whether it is hard side or soft side because having a wall between you and the outside world is going to make a big difference versus a piece of canvas that somebody could cut through and get right to you. Think about alternative ways of defending yourself. Bear spray, knives, blunt objects, gardening tools. Whether or not your vehicle can drive at high speeds and in off-road conditions is also considered a form of defense and your personal skill sets are an asset here as well. So where does Danny and his occupants rate? Well, I'm putting us at a six, at least when we're in Alaska and able to exercise our rights to bear arms. Yes, we love traveling in other countries, but we do feel a little bit vulnerable when we are not able to exercise those aforementioned rights. So when we go into places like Mexico, I'd probably drop us down to a four. Our camper unit is hard-sided, but it is only as secure as one could possibly be in an aluminum can with acrylic windows. <laughs> yes, and while Ben and I don't have any military training, we have lived in Alaska long enough to have developed some wilderness and winter survival skills. Well, if it's the end of the world, nothing's going as planned. Somebody's gonna get sick and somebody's gonna get hurt. So let's talk about medicine and medical emergencies. Starting off with that first aid kit. Is it designed for boo-boos or is it designed to save a life? In addition to your medical kit, we have to think about medications. Not only the ones that you take on a daily basis, but the ones that you might need if an emergency arises. So do you have plenty of them and are you stocked ahead? Also, do you have any kind of medical or first responder training? It can mean the difference between life and death when somebody is sick or injured. Well, we feel Denny and his occupants rank really well here at N8. Short of being an ambulance, we're very well prepared thanks to our first aid kit from My Medic. Yes, one that is meant to save lives, not just take care of boo-boos. So think airway, breathing, circulation, the ABCs. That's what this kit is for. And rather than go into all the details of everything we put in our first aid kit, we're gonna link the video that we created about it in the description below. I feel we're really well prepared in terms of medicine. After all of our trips to Mexico, we have put together a very respectable med box. And then when combined with Rebecca's training as a physician assistant, that just adds to the uh, arsenal. Yeah, so I've had training in rural and emergency medicine, so that really helps. But more importantly, we've also made sure that either by osmosis or intention, Ben knows a lot of these things as well. In case I'm hurt or injured, he can take over. In terms of our weakness, we really would like to add an AED and some Ambu bags to our kit to really feel totally prepared in this department. Moving right along to your geographic location. Where in the world are you? Is the area subject to extreme heat or extreme cold? And if it is, how far do you have to go to get to somewhere a little more pleasant? In addition to that, you have to think about population centers and people, because lots of people can sometimes mean trouble. In addition to that, you want to think about your proximity to water sources as well as food sources and how long it would take you to get to said places. 
So where does Denny rank? Well, in Alaska, we're gonna put him at a seven. Yes, it's cold, but the camper can handle it. And in our favor, there's not a lot of people up there. And also in our favor, food and water are everywhere. On a plus side for the camper itself, we have four redundant heating sources, very beneficial in the Arctic. On the downside, we don't have air conditioning. Last but not least, let's talk about the occupants of your bug out vehicle. Now is when we find out what skills are you bringing to the table. For example, are you bilingual? Are you a ninja or Navy SEAL? Can you hunt, fish, forage? Or have you received extensive medical training? Honestly, the possible list of skill sets goes on and on, but a few others that we've thought about are being able to negotiate, having excellent driving skills, or being mechanically inclined where you know how to weld or fix things. So where does Danny and his occupants being us rank in this final category? We're putting ourselves at a seven with thanks to Rebecca's medical skills and training. They are going to be priceless in the end of days. We can speak a little bit of French and a little bit of Spanish, but we also do not have to register our hands as lethal weapons, so we're not trained in that manner. We are also both very good drivers. We can hunt and fish and forage, and Ben is really good at turning a wrench. Thank you so much for joining us on our Rank Your Rig Vehicle. We're really excited to uh, hear your scores and also hear a little bit more about your vehicles in the comments. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check out our website, outliersoverland.com. Normally we'd say see you on the road, but in the midst of this, I guess we'll see you at home. Bye.